Well, hello you guys, welcome to The Gliner, where we talk about anime, manga, and everything in between. Today we are talking about Dragon Ball Super, episode 74. Last we left off, Gohan had, in turn, um, been caught by the alien dude, which I still can't remember his name for some other reason. I do not know why. I just heard it. I just read it. I just, what the heck, man? Like, seriously. Well, we continue on into the uh, next episode where... He uh, continues on with the shot and misses Gohan, which causes a great explosion, which could destroy things pretty badly. It's a pretty deadly weapon, actually, guys. It's, it's a pretty deadly weapon. Uh, but Gohan avoids it and finally gets him to understand, hey, I'm Gohan. And he's like, oh, hey, Gohan, sorry about that. That situation. And he explains his, uh, what's going on. And uh, things progress on. Where we find that Barry has created a plan to make a, uh, to destroy Gohan's family with Fidel and Pam. But what ended up happening is the idol ends up uh, trying to keep it, keep that away from him without telling him that she was trapping him and brings him to the rooftop so he can fly away. But Barry catches photos of him and uh, of them and uh, of her kissing Gohan. This becomes a stainless type of picture. So guess what happened? Barry uh, goes to Gohan's house once Gohan gets home and reveals it to Gohan and Videl. Which Videl rips up the photos and says, You are a sad, pathetic man. Just because I denied your autograph, you might want to go this far to try and ruin our lives. You know what? Gohan is not like that and he probably has a good reason for what had happened. So honestly, I suggest you leave. And as everything uh, pans out and Gohan, Gohan uh, pushes uh, Barry out the door, uh, Barry ends up uh, getting uh, attached with the alien entity that the uh, other aerial alien was after. And guess what ends up happening? Barry takes, uh, it's taken uh, over, well not really, Barry still has his consciousness with it, just get, is given great power through the darkness of his heart, which then he uh, uses to knock out Gokhan and take Pan. Which, one thing I didn't understand throughout uh, this whole battle scene, once we get to it, once we get to the end of this uh, explanation is uh, something pretty interesting and pretty intense, but uh, uh, Gohan uh, gets to Barry to save Pan, and, Pan, and he's actually really scared of Pan because Pan holds up pretty well. She has nerves of steel, she thinks it's exciting, and Pan's probably stronger than him in the first place, but without a problem. But, you know, that's not the point here. Um, Gohan uh, comes and acts, and they start filming the whole thing as uh, berries get bigger and more monstrous. As they put this a part of the movie, and uh, at the very end, Gohan goes Super Saiyan and saves the day without killing Barry. And uh, Barry is now saved. Pam Cham's uh, uh, innocence is saved from the death of Barry. And Fidel uh, protects her uh, her mother. They look uh, to keep Pam under pressure. So we get to see how Pam actually in turn grows up to be a strong uh, strong character in the end. Pam being uh, pretty strong as a baby in the first place. And everything and showing a very strong relationship between Videl and Gohan and, uh, that we don't normally see in the anime at, at all. We uh, see a lot of families and normally they are pretty broken in uh, some shape or form. Vegeta and Bulma. Vegeta not really caring about his uh, children but and but is caring about his children at the same time. Goku and um, Goku and Chi Chi where Goku ignores everything and apparently he's never been kissed by Chi Chi, they just have had intimate relations, so she takes it from him pretty hardcore, not the point, and uh, ignoring his children so he can go off training, which Goten uh, starts to join in with as well, so Goten and Goku are pretty close when it comes to training time. Um, the whole the whole aspect of family in this has always been a type of a broken situation, which in Gohan's case is completely different, where his family actually has a connection actually wants to uh, actually live, coexist with each other pretty well, and the whole thing like that. And the whole weird father son relationship Piccolo has with Gohan is kind of weird as well, but that's not the point. That is not the point here. The uncle being a uh, fatherly life failure is not a point to you guys. 
Anyways, the thing I didn't really get about the ending part, uh, part of all this, with all the powers and stuff like that, you'd expect for Z Fighters to chime into the uh, spirit, uh, the energy uh, she given off by Gohan in the first place and seeing that a battle was taking place. This would have led Goku to appear as an instant transmission in the first place, but he had not. And there was nothing about him going off the train or not being on the census, but when, because whenever Gohan goes into a high peak form of a uh, like two things or like that, Goku can sense that energy but instantly and will uh, would teleport right to the situation. So with Vegeta, especially since this uh, whole situation is happening in Star City, so the whole aspect of what ended up happening with the power ups and stuff like that. It kind of gives a good standalone uh, moment for Gohan, but it also gives a kind of a thought. Why the hell didn't anybody else show up during this occasion? Why would they think nothing of Gohan going Super Saiyan and then afterwards they're not saying a thing? I understand this is supposed to be like a little filler arc type situation where um, it's not going to make complete 100% sense, but. Later on, Goku is uh, is shown to watch the movie as well, and kind of like what my father would do. I wasn't really interested in the battle scenes or anything like that. I'm more interested in doing what I want to do type of situation. And yawns off as GT hits him. This is your son. God damn it. That is that type of stuff. So Goku being aware, I would have been aware of the battle in the first place, which kind of leads to the thought of. Why didn't he show up? Why didn't Vegeta show up? Just to watch in, in, in any aspect, shape, or form here. Like, they didn't even need to join in. They could have just popped up and uh, uh, just seen it at this point in time. Goku, especially since he knows the instant transmission and would have been there instantly. Vegeta would have uh, taken a little bit of time, but he would have been there pretty uh, pretty quickly as well. And as he's chaining with Whis, when, in, which, in, in which case, he would not be able to make it there in time to win a match for Vegeta. But Goku still is the, is a excellent point on why why Goku didn't show up at least as a little cameo in the background. You can do it, son. The it's it's one of those things where the uh, ending uh, the not the ending but the situation didn't really make sense to what could have happened in the situation, especially living in Star City itself. Um. Well, that's pretty much my thoughts on that aspect of the show, but otherwise, the uh, Saiyan Man saga was a very interesting one, and I really did enjoy it, and I really enjoyed seeing Gohan doing what he needs to do as the Great Saiyan Man. Not to say that a spinoff of Great Saiyan Man would be an interesting uh, point of perspective, but it actually showed that uh, Gohan still could fight, and could fight to a good potential uh, to protect the Earth from what needs to happen if Goku's down around. Goku just needs to, uh, is just uh, a person that fights stronger evils, and in which case uh, Gohan can take on the best. But I think after this episode, it might uh, turn into more of a Gohan tra uh, training a bit more after being ravishly beaten by a weak opponent like uh, this uh, alien that shows up in the first place so and uh, from later explanations it kind of shows that Gohan does train uh, with Goku at some point so it, uh, Gohan might, might be getting trained up as time goes on so we'll see what happens there and what in turn creates the Dragon Ball Super uh, ne uh, arc next the next Dragon Ball Super arc why can't I say that? What's wrong with that? How come I can't talk? We all know what's coming up next. That's not the point here. I'm just yeah. Oh, and uh, other related news, not just the review of the uh, Dragon Ball Super 74, but in other related news, we actually have uh, Toonami who is finally releasing the dubs onto their channel. So the dubs are coming out one at uh, one at a time, and the newest episode uh, for the dubs came, uh, was uh, Goku finally going to Keaton Kai's outlook and uh, training a bit. So that is about where they are in the English dub. If you guys are going to try keeping up in the English dub, but the, as for any of us people who actually watch the Japanese, uh, the English sub instead, we will continue on with episode 75 next time. So until the next time, you guys, you guys have a great day and a fun one as well.
Hey guys, thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you press the like button below. If you have any comments, the same thing goes for there. Leave your comment below. Uh, if you guys have not subscribed yet, make sure you guys press the subscribe button right over here. And my latest reviews are right over here if you want to continue on my reviews. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day.